in verse 12. Here's the patience of the saints. Something, uh, something to consider in your life is having patience and waiting on the Lord. I have learned in my life to not try to generate God's power or not try to uh, perform in the flesh what I've asked God to do. Wait on the Lord. I, I mean, I have a life of stories to tell about how many things that I tried to jump ahead. I, I would ask God, God, please do this for me. And then I would jump in and start doing it as, as if I was smarter than God, as if I thought God was taking too long, as if I knew that God wanted it to be this way. He just, he was waiting for me. That is not what the Bible says. They that wait on the Lord. And I believe in having patience as a saint of God. And if we ask God to do something, if you ask God to heal your marriage, if you ask God to uh, change your spouse's view on Christianity about being saved, if you've asked God to take sins away from your life and just remove them away, if you've asked God to do that, you'll find that you trying to do that in your flesh, will, it will not work. So wait on the Lord. If you ask God to do something and you're a child of God, He will give you what you asked or He'll give you something better. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beautiful example of that. Paul asked for the thorn to be removed three times. And God didn't say, oh, sure, I'll remove it there. How do you feel? No, He didn't even say no. He said, my grace is sufficient for him. He gave him something better than the thorn that was in his flesh. It was called grace. And I'll take what God has that's better for me any day of the week. The, the charismatic word faith crowd who teaches the witchcraft doctrine that you must, the reason why you don't have anything is because you haven't pronounced the right words in faith. You have not used the, the witchcraft powers of faith, the force called faith. That's what they call it, the force. Think about it. Um, you have not done that, therefore God cannot give it to you because you haven't asked the right way. I'm studying a book on witchcraft, and it is almost line upon line, word for word, the same as the word faith doctrine. Like you cannot make any negative confessions, and you must declare exactly what it is that you want. You cannot ask. And I'm talking about witchcraft. Witchcraft says you cannot ask the forces of the elements to do, uh, you cannot ask them for something. You must demand it. That's, if you've ever heard these people talk, that's, that's their doctrine. <sighs> anyway, uh, so get in, he said, verse 12, here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Now, here's why this verse is so important. Um, this verse, isolated by itself, would make you think that there are people who keep the commandments of God in the sense that they, um, they obey all the Ten Commandments, they do not sin, and they have attained righteousness by way of the law. Um, several ideologies come into mind. The idea of um, hyper-dispensationalism would say that there is a dispensation coming whereby tribulation saints must keep the commandments of God in order to be saved. I cannot, I, there, is, there is nothing in this Bible that leads me to believe that, not one thing. This verse, you can't isolate a verse and make it its own little doctrinal island. It ha all scripture is given by inspiration of God's profitable for doctrine. Here a little, there a little, line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. And I admit, I looked at this verse, and I, I struggle with it. Okay, it says they keep the commandments of God uh, and the faith of Jesus. Now, let me, let me give you a, an, an easy illustration of what that is, all right? Here's the easy version. Um, here is the law. Here is grace. Here is if you perform, you can be saved. Only Christ did. Only Christ did. Here is, if you believe, you can be saved. 
So I have here on one side the commandments of God, and I have here on the other the faith of Jesus. And you know what? I've decided to keep them. Nobody is going to take what I believe, think, feel, preach on concerning the Bible. No man is going to take that away from me. There, you cannot uncover enough alien spaceships hidden down in the ocean that proves that the Bible was all wrong. You cannot do that to me. I don't care what they, they I, I have the idea uh, based upon uh, a lot of things I read like Fat Albert Pike and Manley Hall and there, there's been several other things that there is, there is a hidden secret somewhere. There's something buried and hidden that's going to be revealed and come out and it's going to literally shift the entire world's thinking on every, every religion, every religion, the exception of the faith of Jesus Christ, the Word of God, every religion is going to crumble at the feet of this startling revelation, whatever it is. That is not going to change my mind. I believe this book, and I will die believing this book. I am keeping this. I'm not, exchange, I'm not exchanging it for this one, New King James. I'm not exchanging it for the book. I'm not exchanging it for the book of uh, Moron, uh, excuse me, Mormon. I'm not. I'm not trading it in. And I've, I've known people. I've known people. I've had people in this church. I've had people behind my pulpit trade this in for something else. So if you ask me if I'm going to keep the commandments and the faith of Jesus Christ, I absolutely tell you I will.